Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to another Plate Up Learning the Basics tutorial. In this tutorial slash guide, I'm going to be going over the bare basics of automation. And when you think of automation, you think of conveyor belts, grabbers, smart grabbers. Now, conveyor belts themselves, in my opinion, have a limited use because they can't grab. They, they have a pushing action only. A grabber and a smart grabber have the ability to pull and push, hence being called a grabber. The difference between a smart grabber and a regular grabber is the fact that a smart grabber is set to only grab a certain thing. Now that could be a raw ingredient like a carrot. It could be a cooked ingredient like a finished hamburger, or it could be a plated item like a plate with stir fry. Whatever this is set is the only thing that it will pull until it is reset. Now, I'm in prep, prep mode right now. I have the windows zoomed in so you could see what I'm doing a lot better. But basically, when you go into prep mode, or excuse me, when you go into practice mode, you can set the smart grabber. It doesn't have to be, it could be setting over here. And say you want the smart grabber to pull onions. You go into practice mode, you set the smart, you set the smart grabber to onions, and then you place this back to where you want it to be, and it could be hidden. That's the beauty with using practice mode and smart grabbers is you set them once and then you can, you can hide them. Say you hide them back in here and they're just going to be grabbing onions or whatever they're grabbing. You don't have to set it during your run. So that's a very important tip um, that practice mode is used for as well as if you have a complex automation, which we're not into complex automation yet. Uh, that'll be a later video to make sure everything works before you start your day because nothing is worse than having something turned the wrong way and it messes up your whole automation and you have to scrap the run and start over. But anyway, these are the three things, the three um, conveyor, grabber, and smart grabber. And you may say, well, how would you use each one? What scenario would you use each one? Well, a grabber for me would be used, say, to pull an ingredient from a bin. It could be, it could be a hamburger bin or hamburger refrigerator. It could be a bun bin. It could be a fruit or a vegetable bin, it doesn't matter, is it will pull whatever is it whatever it is against, it'll pull it off of this once the action is completed. Now, that's a bit of a, the next step I'm gonna get into, but basically the grabber will pull anything that it's attached to as long as it can pull it and the uh, it's set up correctly. A smart grabber that is unset, as soon as you place it next to something it can grab, it will grab and it will set itself automatically to the first thing that it is next to. And the only way to reset it, especially if you say you have it pulling onions from here, the only way you could reset this would be to go would be to quit your run or a or you know quit the run, load it back in, and go into your prep mode to reset it, like to move it here. Then go into practice mode, grab your onion to reset it. It is very difficult to reset a smart grabber in the midst of a run unless it's waiting on something to cook. If you're having it against a smart a safety hob, which I'm going to get into in a second here, it may be okay that way. Um, otherwise, you have to go back into your practice mode to reset this. That's just a bit of an information about this. It's difficult to reset this during a run, especially if it's hidden somewhere behind a bunch of counters, it's impossible to reset it. So that's a big thing to make sure it's reset. But these things effectively work for the most part the same way. They grab and they push an item. A conveyor belt, if you put a conveyor belt against the lettuce, I'll show you exactly what happens. I'm just using these three items as examples. You could use any any sort of food bin. Let's go into practice mode and I'll show you exactly what happens. It grabs the top one, which I actually kind of have these out of order, but the top grabber will grab an onion, or excuse me, will grab a carrot, you know, keep grabbing it. A smart grabber, you can see now this little icon right here on top of the camera, I think you can see, is an onion. Now, if I grab this, it's going to grab another another one. So you have to be really super quick. You can't even do it to reset what, the, what this is. Like it, It's almost impossible to do it by hand. If you have two people, someone holding a carrot, and the other one picks up and you spam the, the interact button or the set down button, maybe. And as you see, so a grabber grabs from a bin. A small grabber grabs from the bin, and then it sets itself. And then a conveyor does absolutely nothing. But if you have a conveyor and you put something on it, it will then push it to where it needs to go. Let's get out of practice mode here. So the most basic automation you could set up, in my opinion, is actually one of the one of the best. Say you have a salad run going. Okay. 
And now uh, we can move some of these out of the way. Well, actually, we can use this. Is this set up? You want? You don't want to have to grab a lettuce and place it on a counter and then go back and get another one, etc., etc., etc. Well, that's where using something like a mixer comes into play. And there are various types of mixers. You have the regular mixer, which is this one here. It performs the both chop and knead. The hand is the knead action. And then the, uh, the cleaver is a chop action. It says slow to it. The conveyor mixer, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. The conveyor mixer says slow as well, can form both things, but also pushes after processing. So basically what a combiner mixer does is it combines a, con a, a, um, gra well, a grabber slash conveyor belt and a mixer into one thing. Now, they cost, this costs the same as both of these costs as a bit of information there. But they do save one full tile of space. And these are effectively good to use as a corner. So say you're grabbing a bin like this, like this, like this, and this is going to a prep station, which I'm gonna demonstrate this in a second, like that. Because if you would have a regular mixer here, you'd have to have this here, and you'd have to have this like this, if that makes sense. So we're gonna get into that in, in a little bit, another minute from now. I have a bunch of these things put in here so I can show you what this is. So for me, something like a chopping item, like a thing of lettuce, carrots for stir fry, onions, which would go on like hamburger toppings or something like that, it'd be good to automate or having onions and mushrooms done. So in cheese, if you have like a cheese wheel to do the cheese for pizza, the only thing that you cannot use a mixer for to chop without some intervention is tomatoes because tomatoes, the mixer will will chop the tomato to the first action and then it'll continue to make it into sauce. So that'll be in a more of an advanced tutorial, which will be another later episode about how you can go about combating the way the mixer works to slice tomatoes for a salad run. But to demonstrate exactly how you would do this is I have a bit of a square rush on here. You could have this set up however you want. You have your bin here and you have, say you have, I'll do it this way. You have your lettuce bin here. You can turn this whatever way you want, doesn't matter. And for this, you could use a regular grabber or a smart grabber. We'll use a regular grabber, just like that. And I'll show you exactly what this looks like. And this will be the same thing for anything that needs to be chopped except tomatoes. So let's go into practice mode. And as you see, it grabs it, puts it on the mixer, and it mixes it and chops it. Well, it doesn't mix it. It uses the mixing. The mixer uses the chop action to chop it. And that's pretty handy because say you're doing salads, I'm going to grab myself a plate. You grab the lettuce, boom. While you're serving someone else, this is doing it automatically. Now, you can take this one step further. I think you think where I'm going here is you can actually have, if you if you don't have a regular, a, a, say you have a conveyor mixer, you then can have this set up. You could have all this hidden and say you have a counter here, right? And now let's see what that looks like. Which practice mode is a bit easier to get to than running all the way around, but nonetheless. Now, what that does is it grabs it, it chops it, and it pushes onto a counter. And, and you're probably thinking the same thing I'm thinking. Well, could that work into a prep station? And the answer is yes. Of course it can. Now, like I said, you could use this or you could use another conveyor or another, I say conveyor belt interchangeably with this, but you know what I'm talking about. You could have it set up like this. And I'm going to show you exactly what that looks like. And again, this is for anything that can be chopped, that needs to be chopped. This could be for onions, for carrot, for broccoli. Um, it could be for meat. If you have meat stir fry and you have the meat refrigerator, a mixer is very, very good, or a rapid mixer is very, very good for that because meat takes forever to chop by hand. So if you're trying to do that while you're doing something else, a mixer saves time. And now let's see what happens here. The grabber grabs, mixer mixes, slash chops, puts it in the prep station. So now, if you're doing a salad run and you have this bit automated, you don't have to chop salad anymore. And you can quickly grab one, grab two. I'm running, I don't have much space here. Grab three, and you're serving all these people. And guess what? It'll continue to fill. Now, the only other thing is if this would be a frozen prep station, these items would remain until tomorrow, until your next day, no matter how many are in here, whether it's one up to four, will remain until the next day. And I'm just gonna bin these just to show you that it's, that it's working like this. And that's the easy setup or easy explanation on how to use a grabber or smart grabber. Like I said, these are interchangeable for this example and to use either a mixer and a grabber afterwards to put into a prep station or just a conveyor mixer. 
Now, a rapid mixer, we can get out of practice mode, a rapid mixer is a lot faster than a regular mixer. But the conveyor mixer, regular mixer, heated mixer are all the same speed. And if you're using a heated mixer, say this is the only thing you have, it costs the same as a regular or rapid mixer. There's no issues there. And if it's grabbing and mixing something that doesn't or that cannot be cooked by itself, like lettuce or onion or or uh, broccoli or carrot, the heating mixing feature does does nothing. It'll still work as a regular mixer. It just won't it just won't um, cook anything. Now, if you're having something, saying you're using it for chips, you have it grabbing from the potato bin. Go here. It'll perform the chop action, and then it'll also perform the heating action for something like chips. Or onion rings are a bit more complicated because you have to use the flour, but same same difference, and like that. So that's, that's quite a basic automation, and one of the most easy, one of the most helpful. Because anything, like I said, anything that requires chopping from a bin or from a refrigerator. Now hamburgers aren't chopped. If you get the fresh patties, the hamburger refrigerator will be replaced with the steak refrigerator because you're chopping the steak. Now, in the next clip, I'm going to be going over how to use some basic automation for cooking. And then the following click, some basic automation that's used for dishwashing. Alrighty, so the next little information I'm going to give you guys is about how to use basic automation for cooking. Now, we have a danger hob here. Up here, we have the starter hob, and we also have a safety hob. Now, we all know how these work. The starter hob is 75% speed. The safety hob is 75% speed. A regular hob would be one speed, and then a danger hob is 2x speed. And you can use all these for somewhat the same exact way here. And for the example, the demonstration, I'm going to be using the hamburgers. Now, the, the thing that you have to keep in mind is that any hob besides the safety hob will burn if you're pulling something onto it like this. The safety hob will stop after the cooking cycle and it will not burn. But using any of the other, the starter hob, the basic hob, or using the danger hob, which is up here, if you use any of these, whatever you pull from this will burn without you taking it off unless you're using something like a combiner or an auto plater, which will be in a later tutorial. That is not basic automation. But for basic automation, if you're doing something like hamburgers or hot dogs that or even something like fish, which is a basic action, say you have a safety hob. I'm just going to go into practice mode and show you exactly what this does. I don't need to demonstrate it for the other hobs because it will burn. And if you're using a safety hob, it'll grab the burger bun or the burger patty. It will cook it and watch what happens. Nothing. It basically sits there until you do perform another action with it. Let's get out of practice mode here. But for the most basic of automations, the way I would set this up, Regardless of what hob you have now in the beginning of the game, if you get a grabber right away or a conveyor belt that you upgrade to a grabber, automating something like this would be great. But but you don't really want it to pull from the bin because it will constantly be feeding onto here. You want to have it the other way. You want to have it pulling off of a hob, especially something like a danger hob. Because say you have a setup like this. Let's just get rid of these for now um, to not use these as the example. Because what will happen here, let's go into practice mode again, and I, I will, we will use a prep station here for demonstration purposes. Because prep stations are one of those things, if you're doing something like hamburgers or hot dogs, that you definitely, um, in my opinion, is very beneficial for you. Let's go into practice mode here, and I'll show you exactly what I mean by having the grabber. This could also be a smart grabber, mind you. It just can't be a regular conveyor belt because conveyor belts do not perform a pull action. They're a push action only. So the way this works is you grab a patty and you think, well, what's going to happen? Well, watch. Cooks it, automatically pulls it off because a grabber will always pull an item off of something when the action is completed. Cook another one. Cook another one. Cook another one. And, and the burn icon is there. And the reason why the burn icon is there is because of the speed of the grabber. We don't have, there is no such thing as a fast grabber in the game. The conveyor belt, the grabber, and the smart grabber all are at, like, say, a 1x speed. There, there are no speeding up options. So when you're, when you're doing something, I'm going to take these out of here. 
because you saw the burn icon. If you go too fast, so this will actually cook before this action is completed. So you have to be a bit careful doing that. But this setup like this, if I have one grabber, this is how I'm going to be doing burgers. If you, if you if you don't have a prep station, you can replace this with a counter. And you can put a counter here. As long as there's something that this can pull off onto, I mean, it can pull off onto one of these. But it's better to pull off onto a counter than you have two set up. But having something like this, you grab your burger bun, save your burger buns, pick it, you slap it onto there, and boom, there's your burger done. Or ultimately, if you pick your burger off of this, I mean, these would be obviously closer than, than I have them here. You played it, and there you go. So that's another way to use a grabber or a smart grabber. If this was a smart grabber, it would automatically set itself to a cooked patty. Now, if you put a patty back on here, it'll do nothing because the cooking action is actually completed already. Now, you say, well, what happens if you fill up everything? Well, I'm gonna show you right now what's gonna happen is it will burn and it will start on fire as Danger Hobbs will do. We can put the fire out and that is perfectly fine like that. And we can just, uh, just bin this somewhere. So that's another example of how to use a grabber or smart grabber, like I said, to automate, to, to do basic automation with cooking. Now, in the next clip, I'm going to set up some basic automation for dishes. But you know what? Before we do that, I actually have one more thing to show you guys when it comes to something like burgers or hot dogs or something that is, that is cookable in a sense. If you have a safety hob here, you're, you, I think you get my where I'm coming from here. If you have a safety hob, watch what happens when you have this set up. And again, you could hide this. You could have this up here. Like say you, this is the top of your restaurant, you have other things here. You could hide this bin. Because watch exactly, I'll show you exactly what happens. Again, let's go into practice mode. You gotta run all the way down here. Practice mode, and just watch what happens. Still on screen, it'll cook it. And it is a bit slow, obviously, because of the safety hob is only 0.75 compared to the danger hob, which is two. So I'm just going to help this out a little bit because I want to fill these up. So let's see what happens when you use a safety hob. Nothing happens. And it'll sit here and this will do nothing. Even if you grab a bin, or a, a bun and you place it on here, nothing will cook because the safety hob, once it's done its cooking action, it will not burn. That's the beauty of having a setup like this, because as you see here, ignore this hamburger going up here, by the way, um, having this setup like this, this is a very easy way to automate burgers or hot dogs, mind you, because it requires very little thing. It requires a, a safety hob. It requires two grabbers, and that's it. Well, a prep station, of course. But again, this could be omitted and just have a regular counter here, so it's putting it regular onto a counter. It doesn't really matter. It's just if you have... A few upgraded items like this, which aren't hard to obtain if you get your first blueprint desk or some basic RNG, RNG drops. Now, on the next clip, I'm going to show you some basic tips of automating dishes, or at least basic automation of dishes. Okay, so the next ba basic automation I'm going to be showing you in today's video is basic automation of dishes. And that doesn't mean doing dishes. It's just helping automate either collecting or returning plates, so to speak. Now, we have our five different types of sinks. We have our starter sink, which is the same thing as the regular sink, except it is a slower process. But for the most part, it's the same thing, just is a little bit slower, it holds one plate. Then you have your power sink, which is a lot faster, it's a double speed. Then you have your soaking sink, which is an automatic way however slowly to do dishes. Then you have the wash basin, which holds up the four plates and it washes them as, as the same speed, whether you have one plate, two, three, or four plates, all the same speed. So using a wash basin is good to have. The more plates you have in it, the more efficient it is in the sense of it's the same amount of work or time for four plates as it is for one. And then of course you have the dishwasher, which is automatic in the sense of it cleans them automatically, but it is slow. Now, the two things with the sinks, I'm going to touch on this very quickly, is that the, ba the regular sink and the starter sink are the only sinks that can provide water for things like soups or for making a dough ball. These other sinks here, these do not provide water at all. So if you're doing some sort of automation you got, and you're using something like, um, say, for soups, you always have to make sure this is quite accessible to get the water for the soups or for like the broccoli or mashed potatoes or the, or the, the uh, meat toppings, etc. But basically, 
other than the soaking sink, these are somewhat done exactly the same way in the sense of how you could automate it a little bit. I'm going to touch on the dishwasher at the end, but for today, but for the but for right now, it'd be, it's a bit difficult to simulate dirty dishes. But I'm going to try to do that for you guys by having the cats come in here so I can make some dirty dishes to show you exactly what this does. But basically, for me, how I would have dishes if I am doing basic dish automation, I would have my plate stack here, and I would use a smart grabber. Now this one is re this one's still set because it had hamburgers from the the, the clip before. But I'll show you exactly how to reset this. Now, no matter which cook, which appliance, which washing, dishwashing appliance you use, you have to have a smart grabber for what I'm about to show you guys. And you know, what? I'm actually just going to use the power sink because it's quicker. Um, actually, no, no, sorry, I'll use the wash basin. It makes just as much sense for the wash basin. Um, it's just a bit slower. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start the day to show you how this this is the most basic way to automate dishes of retrieval of dishes and then after this clip I'll show you about loading dishes so let's just go into practice mode once again and I will show you exactly what this does so I have to wait for the cats to come in because that's the only way to get dirty dishes unfortunately you can't uh, get dirty dishes any other way and since I'm doing hamburgers I'm just gonna cook a couple hamburgers for them and they will have a few dirty dishes here so ignore this part of the, uh, oh, this one needs a plate, obviously. Alrighty. So these are going to finish. Now, what you'll do is you put your, this into here and you think, well, what's going to happen if this isn't set? Well, if this is not set to a clean dish, this will pull this just like this. That's what it will do if you don't have this set. So the way around that is you take a clean plate right as the day starts or in practice mode, you reset this. As you see, this little icon now is a clean plate. So if you put a dirty plate, or since this is the basin, up to four dirty plates, this won't do anything. Now, I'm just standing up here so you guys can see it a bit better. So I'm gonna wash here. Now again, the wash basin is a bit slower, but watch what happens when they're done. The conveyor belt or the smart grabber will automatically unload the device. Now, if you have a dishwasher, when the dishwasher is finished, it opens up by itself, which means when this opens up by itself, the smart grabber will automatically unload the plates. So dishwashers, they are a bit pricey. That's one of the down the downsides of them compared to the other sinks. A soaking sink is worth 20. A power and um, wash basin are both 60. The regular sink is, is free because you get it at the beginning of the run. And the other sink, I believe, is 20. Let's clean this mess up. Anyway, let's get out of practice mode. So that's that's one way to do it. The other way to do it would be using the dishwasher, which I just explained how that works, and it's exactly the same way. If you use a power sink, same way again, and if you use the regular sink, same way again. Now, the soaking sink is where it's a little bit different, and I'm going to have a full soaking sink automation tutorial on this later on. But I'm going to show. I'm going to start the day again. Have the cats come in, have a couple dirty dishes, and I'll show you what this does. And I like soaking sinks because they are automatic. As soon as you put a plate into it, it's automatic how they're going to work. And after this next quick segment here, I'm going to plate this up for this cat. Oh, that's actually two of them. So I got to have two of them on here. I'll show you exactly what this will do. We're only going to be using one plate for this example. Now we're going to pick the plate up, dirty plate. This is set to clean plates. You pop it in here. And what will happen is this will actually clean it by itself. We can actually just put this one in in here just to get rid of it. Dishwasher does make a bit of noise, excuse me for that. But I'm going to demonstrate when that's done, it pulls it. When this is done, watch what happens. It'll be done in a second here. Now, just picture this being here. It's the same exact thing as having the basement. When this is finished, we have more cats coming in, of course, it'll open automatically. And if you have a smart grabber here, it will automatically pull this plate out and return it to the plate stack. Now you may say, well, okay, well that's great of pulling dishes, but what about feeding dishes? How does that work? Well, it works quite the same. So say, let's put this away. Say we have a regular sink. Let's use, a, let's use a power sink. I'm gonna put it up here for this example, and then I'm gonna show you a, a much better setup for this. So say you have something like a dish rack, and then you have, of course, you have your grabber here. Now this could be a smart grabber or a 
regular grabber because all it's doing is grabbing the first thing that it sees, which is going to be a dirty dish. It, it won't be grabbing anything else because the only thing that you're putting on here is a dirty dish. Now, this could be a counter like that, or it could just be this going into this and you just have it as a, a storage. But the way this will work is that you'll place a dirty plate on here. Well, actually, you know what? Let's just run through a day and I'll show you exactly what it means. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one more thing to this. And I don't think I need to do it twice. You guys will understand what I'm talking about here. But let me run one more day through. Unfortunately, it's a big restaurant, so the cats have to run around. But, oh, look at that. It's actually spawning in dirty dishes. So I don't even have to go practice mode. Um, so what happens, so the simulation here is you have dirty dishes here. And you watch this and watch what happens. If you just stand here and you push your interact button down, obviously this plate stack is full. So let's just get rid of these plates. I'm just getting rid of them here just for the example. And let's say you have this all loaded up with dishes, okay? This is the starter plate stack, which only holds four plates anyway. But I'm just going to show you, again, this is a, a bit of a simulation. Say you have this loaded up with four plates. You stand here, and all you do is you hold down your interact button. It'll clean one, clean two, clean three. And all I'm doing is holding down the button. So if you're working on dishwashing in your restaurant, say that's your job, if you have a group of three or four, and people are placing dirty dishes on here, all you do is stand here and do this. And once these are done, then you can return these plates to help with cooking or however, however else you're doing. Now, the only way to fully automate something like this would be to use something like a soaking sink. And I showed that in the previous example that the soaking sink is quite slow, but the setup like this would work. But you'll need, you'd need multiple ones of these, which that comes in a later tutorial when I show you advanced automation for 100% auto, auto dishes. But the concept is the same. You have a dirty dish that will flow into your soaking sink. When it's finished, it'll flow into your plate stack. Now, in the, in the previous couple clips, I've shown you three basic automation methods as far as using conveyor belts, grabbers, smart grabbers. Now we haven't used any conveyor belts, but what you use a conveyor belt for, and this for an example like this, is say you're up against a corner and you don't have anything to break the corner with. Well, you have this like, this would go into here. Actually, no, that wouldn't work, sorry. Um, this is have, say it's like this, and you wanna have a bunch of dishes lined up ready to go because you have some kind of crazy automation setup going. Well, you would do something just like this. Or even for the for argument's sake, you could have this like this. It wouldn't really matter because the, the conveyor belt, like I said, pushes. Whatever gets pushed onto it, it'll push into this. So you could even have something like this. I mean, you can configure this many different ways. As I showed you up here, like that, say you could store a bunch more dirty dishes. You could stand here and even do more dishes at one time as this will keep continuously feeding through. Like I said, conveyor belts aren't used very much. For me, conveyor belt to use as a filler piece where you want to gain some space in between. And that might be for doing pizzas. You would have an extra pizza or two extra pizzas in your line instead of just having one. That's what a conveyor belt would be used for because you manually have to put something onto it or you have to have the grabber or smart grabber actively pushing something or a conveyor mixer, excuse me, pushing something onto the conveyor in order for it to do anything. So we covered about how to use it to pull items from a bin onto a mixer, onto a preps or into a prep station. We discussed how to use it for cooking, whether it be to push a cooking item onto a hob or to take something from a hob into a, say, a prep station, or even using a safety hob down here to set up a full burger, a very basic burger to grabber, to safety hob, to grabber, to prep station. Quite a simple setup to automatically cook your burgers. And lastly, we talked about auto dishes. And auto dishes is, is just a term that I use for anything that can be automated. It's not full automation. Even a setup like this isn't considered full automation because you actively have to put dirty plates onto this. But as I said, there'll be more advanced tutorials coming out where you could fully automate retrieval of dishes from your tables and you don't have to touch anything at all. All you have to do is wash them. Or if you have a big soaking sink setup, you don't even have to touch your dishes. And there are plenty of videos out there showing people using this in their runs, but I'm going to be showing you guys the breakdown of the easy way to do it in a bit later on in another tutorial. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you for sticking around for the basics of how to use a conveyor belt, a grabber, smart grabber, and three real in-game scenarios using it for preliminary chopping and grabbing, using it for cooking 
or retrieval of cooked item and also using it for dishes. Those are the three most common ways to use mixers and some form of conveyor belt to help your game go a little bit more smoothly and possibly a little bit more easier. So thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll catch you next time in another Played Up Learning the Basics or Advanced Basics tutorial. Take care now.